Hello. So that's like drinking fairy floss. Commercial sports drinks, bars, gels, they all have their place. But if you're training 10 hours plus a week and you're fueling that training well, that's really gonna start adding up fast. I'm Dr. Gemma Sampson. I am an advanced sports dietitian specializing in performance nutrition for cyclists. Now one fueling strategy I've heard a lot of coaches and cyclists talk about lately is sugar water. Yes, plain old sugar and water. I've even had people tell me that if I was any good at what I did as a dietitian, then I would be only recommending people have sugar and water as well. Is this really the best strategy for cyclists to use when they're fueling their rides? And does it get the sports dietitian tick of approval? Let's go and buy some sugar and we're gonna try it out. Right, so I'm just back from the shops. I have got my sugar and I'm ready to make some sugar water. First, we need a set of scales. We chuck our bottle on, tar it to zero, and then now we're going to start adding our sugar. We are going to want 108 grams of sugar in this bottle. There is, it's about this much sugar in this bottle. So it's quite a lot of sugar in there, which is why I'm not looking forward to drinking it. It's going to be so crazy sweet. You can actually use salt to help compensate for the sweetness of sugar. It does neutralize it, however, the amount that I'm gonna need to neutralize that probably isn't gonna work. So I'm gonna add about a pinch of that into there. Now the research that is used sugar water, comparing that to water and just a normal sports drink, basically when you mix it up to this consistency, it's about a 14% solution. Put the lid on, top up the bottle to make 750 ml. Lid is on tight, and then we're gonna shake it. One of the things we've got to watch out for is the sugar solids that are most likely going to be stuck at the bottom. Here goes nothing. Bit of shaking. Ready? Whoa! Hello. Whoa, hello. That's like drinking fairy floss. Okay. Interesting. Insanely sweet. I know I'm not going to be able to drink it like that. It's too sweet. Literally, that is what fairy floss is. Pure sugar with a bit of flavoring. So I'm going to add a little bit of lemon into it to kind of cut through that sweetness and make it actually physically possible for me to drink this on the bike. I'm going to give it another shake and try that again. Okay, so that's more, more like a very, very sweet lemonade. I probably personally would need to put about three lemons in to make that enjoyable on the bike. Just got home and finished my bottle of sugar water, just. It was a challenge. First thing I need to do is brush my teeth. My teeth, my mouth feels disgusting. <laughs> teeth first and then everything else. As a sports dietitian, I am a scientist at heart. So when someone told me that sugar water was the best fueling strategy, I went out there and had a look at the research to see, has there any studies been done on this to test this in practice? And I did find a study where 14 club cyclists rode consuming a rate of 102 grams of carbohydrate an hour from either table sugar or plain old glucose. And while I have some reservations about the exact method they used to estimate changes in muscle glycogen levels, what they concluded was plain old sugar was just as efficient as glucose to, as a fuel source in this type of riding. Sugar water did result in greater utilization of carbohydrates, meaning more of it was absorbed and available and used by the body. This came at the expense of fat oxidization, which is really important for endurance cycling. We wanna be efficient at using carbohydrate for speed but you also want to be efficient at using those fats for long distance. What I would like to have seen in this study was them compare the carbohydrate utilization for all of the cyclists in the study not just four because each individual is going to have different rates and utilization. Now one thing to point out is that not everyone likes sweet things and not everyone can tolerate sugar. So sugar contains both sucrose and fructose and some people aren't able to tolerate fructose rich really well which means if you were to use sugar, table sugar, as your fueling strategy and you didn't absorb that fructose very well you're probably going to end up having some sort of gut issues when you're on the bike. Not ideal. Four out of 14 people that participated in that original study looking at sugar water weren't able to tolerate it and drink all of it. That's 29%. About a third of people weren't able to tolerate it. Now the paper didn't specify why, but I reckon that sweetness probably had a big part to play in it. So the question is, as a sports dietitian, would I recommend you go and use and fuel your rides with sugar water? Like all things with sports nutrition, it really does come down to personal preference. If you tolerate sugar water and find it easy to fuel your rides, go ahead. I just would 
probably make sure you have some regular visits to your dentist. Just like your standard energy drink or gel, sugar water can work as rocket fuel to help with your performance at those high intensity, really hard efforts. But I certainly wouldn't recommend you be only using those quick, fast sugars and carbohydrates all the time. You do really wanna adapt your fueling strategy to the demands of the training session. Some sessions will need more carbs, some will need less. If you are only ever using those rapid, fast carbs, you could be compromising your ability to use fat as fuel, which is really important for endurance cycling. Sometimes you want high carb, sometimes you want lower carb and more fats and proteins and solid food, which is why I recommend you use a range of foods and fluids and drinks, and that might include sugar water, according to the type of training you wanna get and the outcomes you wanna get from that training session. Thanks for watching, I'm Dr. Gemma Sampson. Like, subscribe, remember to fuel your ride, and I will see you on the next video.